In this video, we're going to be talking about the Dremule, but also just a little bit about the Firetail because of how similar it is. But uh, way back when the Dremule first became popular, it, was, it cost a lot of ISK, probably twice what it costs now, to be able to fly it because I loved it so much back then. It was such a powerful frigate. I, was, I started doing the Archangel missions, and I still have, I think, a mission ship um, in both Curse and in Fountain to run the missions, the level fours. So I really loved this ship, and I put in a lot of effort to get, get and fly as many as possible because I would lose them quite a bit. Most ships, you know, most frigates, they're not the most durable ships. This ship excels in the fact that it can get away that it's fast enough that it can get in and get out. Um, but in the end, you're going to die no matter what. That's the nature of EVE. So I loved it so much I was flying it every night. And I went through quite a few of them. Now that the cost has come down, I think it's a much more reasonable ship for people to PvP in. And I think that it's really not being used as much as it should right now in the current game uh, meta I guess people say now the meta of the game in PvP I think roaming through Nullsec in one of these would be pretty powerful especially deep Nullsec where you're likely to find some Care Bears mixed with some uh, revenge fleets and gate camp fleets that will try to gate camp you in and those gate camps can be the very ideal fights that you're looking for as you'll see in some of the PvP videos now, an important note on the PvP videos is that the fit I'm using in the PvP videos is not exactly the same. Some of them don't have a rocket launcher, and the ones that are exactly the same as this have Tech 1 rigs instead of Tech 2 for the shield rigs. So, I recommend the Tech 2 rigs now. The reason I didn't use them before is because they were much, much more expensive. I use the J5B because you can't fit the Fane Epsilon. Your CPU is extraordinarily tight. Um, I use pretty much the, the implants you'd expect me to use, super cheap uh, SP603, evasive maneuvering EM703, you could switch that out with something else, maybe a, uh, a tracking uh, implant, hyperlink is almost uh, mandatory, extra 5% to velocity, this is uh, rapid fire 903, so RF903, that's a good one to make your guns fire faster. Firing faster means more chances for really good hits. And the HG1001, that's a, a super cheap implant that gives you 1% extra to, I believe it's your structure. No, it's your armor. Okay. So 1% more armor. It can't help to have 1%. 13 more hit points. Um, I kind of do that on all my clones now because it's a small but very cheap way to increase my tank. So I don't know about the implants over here. They're very similar, except I use the Surgical Strike, which is 3% damage instead of 3% fire speed. So, why do I have the Fire Tail fit in the Dramiel video? <coughs> the reason for this is because back when I first started flying the Dramiel, I would fly the Dramiel until I ran out of ISK. And I'd, then I'd pretty much be forced to go back and run missions or uh, find a cheaper option. So... For a long while, I started flying the Firetail because after investigating it, I found that it's very, very similar to the Dramiel. Big differences are it's not as fast, it's not as agile, and if we take and turn the micro warp drives off, it's a little bit bigger. So you can see that it's, it's similar, but it's definitely not as good as the Dramiel. So, another thing is the damage. 166 damage to 201. Reason for that is because of drones. You can see it's 125 turret DPS, 58 drone DPS from the Dramiel, and 148 turret DPS and 17 from the from the Firetail. So, the Firetail gets more overall damage from its guns than the uh, the Dramiel, but the Dramiel does more DPS output. Tank, Firetail is slightly better. I could probably do the same thing to the Firetail I, that I did to the Dramiel and improve it even further by taking the rigs up a notch. So let's watch the tank, 7,471. That's 
and now we're up to 7,750. So that's a quick, just under 400, I think, hit points. And it's similar over here with the Dramiel. By upgrading the Tech 2 rigs, we've got an extra almost 300 hit points. Now, that doesn't sound like much when you really sit there and think, 300 hit points. Well, I'll go through that in a second, um, a second and a half with my Dramiel when I'm shooting another ship. But in reality, it can have a pretty big effect, not only in the fact that you have those hit points. It's a little bit more time to get out. You'll see some really close calls where I get out just barely and every little hit point counts but also it gives you just a touch more recharge a couple more hit points of recharge which is going to help you when you're skirmishing or harassing an enemy fleet uh, something else I want to point out is this fit here I think I exported from EVE and into EFT so it's not set up the way I would typically set up a fit I'm kinda of particular about my fits damage control is always at the top propulsion at the top point at the bottom um, but most importantly is if this was set up on an actual ship I would not have two guns and a rocket launcher I would have gun rocket launcher gun reason for that as you saw hopefully you watched my overloading video but the rocket launcher acts as a heat sink so if we come over here and we look at this and this is how a lot of people fit their ships they don't use the, the extra module in the middle or even if you had no module here like um, I've got another fit that has just two 200 millimeters and no rocket launcher but the same fit as this even in that case you want to leave an empty slot in between the two it doesn't have to be a module there um, just as long as they're not up against each other because they leak heat across one slot so you can see here two minutes and two seconds is the average time that's not exact it's it's there's a little bit of randomness to overheating but two minutes, two seconds is how long I could overheat. And in this Dramiel, you're going to be overheating 90% of the time. So in any fight where you take on a frigate or a destroyer, you're going to be fighting overheated the entire fight with your guns. And the reason for that is you need every bit of DPS you can get. So, and with even two minutes, two seconds, that's going to be, you know, the majority of fights are going to be over. Now, in fights like you see where I'm fighting against a bigger target, like the Talos um, in one of the videos, I have to be a little bit careful and turn my overload on and off. I still overload, but maybe not the entire time because I don't want to burn out. Um, I do want to take the target down as fast as possible before any of his buddies can arrive to help him. But we can see here 2 minutes 2 seconds, so what about over here? 2 minutes 29 seconds. So we've gained 27 seconds on average by having a module in the middle. 27 seconds of an extra, how much DPS? 201 to 219, so an extra 18 DPS. It's, it's pretty worthwhile to have that extra 18 DPS going at all times. So, the fire tail, if you want to kind of warm up and get a little bit used to this ship and try it out first before you dive in and spend I guess this Dramiel is probably around 60 70 million um, I'm guessing that's how much it would cost to fit it whereas the fire tail maybe you could fit for 20 million um, 25 maybe even less uh, you may want to try out the fire tail first what I like these for is is mostly null sec solo roaming null sec um, you can use it in faction warfare as you'll see the sheer velocity of the fit, the, the sheer speed and agility allow you to counter a lot of the uh, scram tanks, um, not scram tanks, scram kites that you'll come up against. So it is viable in faction warfare, but that's not really the ideal place for it. I like it for harassing blobs in Nullsec, for killing Care Bears in Nullsec, miners, ratters, um, haulers whatever you can find get them riled up get them to form a fleet and then pull off some of their interceptors and maybe even assault frigates and kill them on the edges of their fleet using the isolation techniques I teach um, further down or it should be down the page in the guide um, whether it's a gate isolation or a 100k isolation or a warp isolation or whatever it may be um, it's a good way to get an enemy fleet to form up to come try to get you 
and then get them to make mistakes so that you can pull kills off them. So, enough talking about the fire tail. Let's close that out. I'll post the fire tail fit in the comments below along with the Dremule fit so you can get both fits. So, let's just minimize that. So, let's talk a little bit more about the Dremule fit before we move on to the videos. And I don't want to waste too much time in this. I've, I, I, I can sometimes get and over talk a subject and talk about the same thing over and over. So, I'm going to try to avoid that. But you know about dual prop. You've seen it before. You've seen it in the other videos. It gives you flexibility and the ability to escape. So let's say I go in and I engage. Micro warp drive. Turn my micro warp drive ideally off before I get quite to the target. So that I'll coast in and not overshoot with these kind of velocities. Overshooting is a real problem. Turn that off and I go to afterburner or nothing while I'm fighting. Oftentimes nothing because even with an afterburner you're so fast that it's going to swing you out. Um, beyond your optimal. Your optimal is 0.7. So to do full damage output, you need to be orbiting at 500 and actually staying close to 500. You can't do that with an afterburner on. If you turn your afterburner off and orbit at 500 on most targets, you'll stay 7, 800 in reality. So that's going to keep you at your ideal optimum DPS output. So there are reasons why you might want to run the afterburner. Um, notably, if you're webbed, run your afterburner. That way you can make sure you control distance as well as maintain transversal velocity. Should you be 100k off a blob and they've got a tornado 100k to k away that can shoot at 100k, you don't want to be approaching the entire fight, which is sometimes the best call for tracking is to approach, um, most notably in the, in the uh, Tyrannus. But if you're sitting still, you're going to get hit really hard or maybe insta-popped. So you want to try to keep some transversal up. The bigger ships are going to have a really hard time tracking. You've got a small signature, so you don't have to worry too much about the bigger ships. But you want to try to keep some kind of transversal up, otherwise you'll get some bad surprises. So it's got a shield buffer tank. That gives you effective hit points, gives you time. And it also, because you're not running an ASB, it's not one of those fits that requires massive micromanagement. I really dislike a lot of these fits, and I fly them sometimes, and you can get some awesome fights. But some of these fits where you've got to run like five, six modules, uh, maybe even more at a time, and manage them all, try to overheat them all optimally, try to use them all so that you don't overrep your ASB and, and run it when you're not needing to run it, so that you don't... Um, forget to overload your ASB on every cycle or all those little things you got to keep up with. I really like the kind of the the KISS KISS ships that are keep it simple. So this is simple. Your tank takes care of itself. You just watch your hit points. If you see yourself going below 50% shields, it's probably a good idea to start getting out. If you see too much coming on, onto the field, it's probably a good idea to start getting out. Um, the greedier you are, the more likely you will be to die, as you'll see me die. So, what's going to save you? Like I've said before, solo is, um, well, I haven't ever said this before, but I've said things similar. Solo is probably 80% the ability to disengage when things go bad, and 20% having enough DPS to kill the target before things go bad. So, high DPS ships, they can get away when they get blobbed, which they always get blobbed. So, having dual prop and having extreme speed allow you to get away. So, if I was in a fight, let's say I'm fighting against a Ishker or an Inyo, either one. I'm scram webbed, can't run on micro warp drive. And all of a sudden, I see stuff coming up on directional scan or landing on grid with me and landing beside him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select an align point, the sun, a planet, whatever. First thing I can find, select something to align to, hit align, and overload the afterburner. Now, I can't run the micro warp drive, and sometimes you might want to try to run the micro warp drive before you go to the afterburner because the micro warp drive is almost an instant save. But if you're pretty sure you're scrammed, overload the afterburner. Keep the enemy target scrammed for as long as possible. You want to keep them scrammed and potentially even overload the scram so you can keep it at a further distance. 
keep them scrammed because if you can, if they can run their micro warp drive, they're going to stay up with you longer. But if they can't run their micro warp drive, then they're sitting still, not even going 647, probably about 400. So they're going 400, and you're going, well, if, if you're webbed with one web, probably somewhere around 1,000 to 1,100 meters a second. So you're easily outpacing them. As soon as you start getting towards the edge of scram range, eight, nine kilometers, you want to look for the opportunity to end that afterburner cycle and get off an overheated cycle of your micro warp drive. Before this happens, already have your micro warp drive primed to be overheated. Have it primed and then just spam that micro warp drive. A lot of people put the micro warp drive in the F1 slot and I think it's a good idea so they can just start spamming the F1 key to make sure they get off one cycle. It doesn't matter if you cancel that after the first cycle, you're going to have a chance to get it back. But that burst of velocity at 7,200 meters a second means you're going to shoot way out past everything else. You're going to take some hits on the way out, but it's probably going to get you outside point range where you're going to be able to warp away after one, maybe two cycles if they have something really fast on the field. So that's your escape. Now, before we move on to the videos, you're not going to see any videos with links but I need to cover links because they are, again, part of the meta, as people like to say, of EVE PVP. Sadly enough, it's not the way I like it, but it's the way it is, and so we've got to evolve and adapt. A lot of people are flying links, even with Tech 1 frigates. So you'll see people out there in Faction Warfare doing 1v1s in Plexes with Tristans, and in Cursus and those like little Tech 1 ships, Atrons and you'll see them running links so even at the lowest level now people are running links so to, to compete you've either got to really really outplay them or you're gonna have to get links yourself that means a second character and I have to say having a second character is definitely worth it in a second account it's certainly worth having, and it makes a big difference in a lot of areas of PvP. That said, I will never roam Nullsec solo with Lynx because it's too much of a hassle to bring the Lynx along with me wherever I go. So I like, just for my personal preference, to just kind of have fun and go shooting across different regions um, and not having to worry about what the other character is doing. Is he in a safe spot? Is he cloaked? All those things. But if you were in, say, Faction Warfare, or you were operating out of one, like a home system, let's say you're lucky enough to be invaded by some alliance and they're trying to kick you out of your station, as has happened to me several times in the past. If you're lucky enough to have that happen, I say lucky because it's basically on-demand fights whenever you want them, and you can get tons of fights out of these people, and you can get them to do so many stupid things that you can take advantage of and get kills off them. So, if you're lucky enough to have them do that, then you can put your links in your system, and let's have a look at what you're going to get. So, this Loki is pretty much my typical Loki, and it's got a point range link. You can see here it goes to 11.5, a speed link from 5,000 to 5,300, or from 5,000 to 6,300, and a shield resist link from 7,300 to 9,000. So, what that means is we've got more hit points. Oh, it also has not shield hit points, it has shield resist. So, a, sh a shield harmonizing link, which is shield resist, and then it also, actually this one, I'm pretty sure this one has the implant for uh, skirmish, for speed and point range, not for shield. I think if you had the shield hit point link you would probably go to 10,000 uh, hit points or something like that so you're getting more hit points more speed more agility and uh, better point range so that you can keep targets pointed at a further range and it helps to get tackle slightly um, you can overload control distances if you needed to control range for some reason that could help now when it comes to escaping you can already see you're going 9,136 meters a second when you overload. That's going to be huge on that overload cycle to get you out of there. But 
for the afterburner, you're going almost 3K a second. So when you're trying to break out of that web, you're going to be going about 1,400 while webbed. I mean, let's see if we can pull that up and get the exact number for you. No, nope, 11, 1176. So you're going 1176 while webbed. That's uh, faster than just about any other frigate out there, even if they have an afterburner. Um, most frigates you're going to fight in null sec won't have afterburners. They'll have micro warp drives. So they'll only be going three or 400 meters a second while you have them scrammed. Um, cruisers are certainly worse. Battle cruisers worse than that. So there's your fit. That's the basics E of T. There's nothing too special about it. It is very hard to fit. If you have trouble, there are plenty of implants that you can use to help you fit it. Last thing is the drones. You can use Hobgoblin 2s for maximum DPS, or if you like, you can switch those to Acolytes. A lot of people like the Acolytes. You're going to take a small hit to your DPS output, but in, in return, you're going to get slightly better drones overall, more hit points, better uh, optimals, optimal range on their guns, the drone drone guns and all that good stuff. So, let's go on to the videos. I'm not going to play all the videos because I think it's, it gets a little bit redundant, but I want to play some of the more important videos. So, let's start with this one here. Okay, let's uh, mute that. All right, in this video, you can see, let's go ahead and pause it. All right, so I'm at a tactical or some people say a perch in PF it's syndicate it's null sec and these guys are all on gate at zero they've got a heretic with them that's popped a bubble at zero and there's a drag bubble roughly 100k off the gate there is an executioner burning to the bubble so to set this fight up as to what's happened beforehand I had been tracking this fleet for a while in my Dramiel and it's important to know this is how I PvP oftentimes. When I'm flying a Tyrannus or a Dramiel or something like that, I basically stalk the enemy fleet, almost as if uh, a cheetah or a lion stalks a herd of, of whatever they are, wildebeests or antelope, whatever. So I will stalk their fleet, and I'll watch their fleet, and I look for weaknesses. I check character ages. I check guns. I check see if there's one guy who's a little bit slow maybe he's had too much to drink and he warps off about 10 seconds later after everybody else so I can grab him I check for all these little weaknesses and I look for those opportunities in this case I had been tracking them they had been very good about not separating I'd gone 100k away from them. nobody would chase me the tornadoes would just try to take pot shots at me I could not get them to really commit and isolate anything off their blob and I can't dive into the blob because there's just too many frigates there. I can't, I can't take that much DPS. So if it was just the Onyx, two tornadoes, and one of these frigates, or even maybe two of these frigates, I would dive right in there and then rely on my speed and small, small signature with an afterburner on to avoid the majority of the DPS while I killed that frigate and then got away safely. But in this case, can't do that. So, stalking my prey, watching them, waiting for an opportunity, and this happens. Executioner goes to the bubble. Don't know why. Is he bait? What's going on? I'm not going to wait to find out. I'm going to warp down and check it out. Wait for him to get a little bit closer, and then you see some gunfire going off. So, even from this distance, 200 kilometers, I can see he's shooting the bubble. So, he's going to go out there and kill the bubble for some reason. Maybe... A lot of times gangs like this will believe the bubble is yours and they're going to piss you off and get back at you for not allowing them to, to kill you and they'll call you names and they'll go, oh, you're a coward, come fight us. Oh, you you have no balls, you won't come fight our 10-man fleet and, and let us kill you with ease because it's not even a fair fight. So, ignore that stuff. I mean, it's obvious they're just bored and they want a free kill. So they are probably trying to get back at me. This, I, I'm pretty sure this wasn't my bubble. So I go down. I lock him up. Executioner. Executioner versus Dramiel. Any day of the week. Easy fight. 
he starts burning back to them. That gets me scared for a second because they're burning towards him and it's you know, both going towards each other. But I get the scram on him and he just stops. So now my main concern is avoiding DPS from those ships as they close. You can see one tornado is taking shots from 50k. Everybody else is closing. I just kill that guy, get aligned to something, anything. The sun happens to be it this time. And get the micro warp drive on. That means I'm going to be putting distance between me and everybody else in the fleet really fast. And that is pretty much it. Although the fight did not end quite here. What happened was I turned off the micro warp drive and tried to pull one of their ships off, maybe the Condor, maybe the Rifter. Wolf and Jaguar would probably take too long for me to kill, um, and the rest of their fleet would get on top of me, but the Condor or the Rifter, unfortunately, they learned their lesson, and they didn't separate again for the, you know, the rest of the time I was with them. So I ended up just warping off. Fight was over. Little teeny kill, not a big deal, but the fact that I pulled a kill off them made me pretty happy. So let's do this one here. So in this one, to set it up, just like I was telling you before, I stalk fleets. So you can see in local, uh, 20 people, assume 18, 19 of them, are this enemy fleet. I had been following this fleet for a while, waiting for opportunities. So they all stayed together. They always stayed on gate, and they would never separate from a gate to approach me. So I went for the, okay... I'm going to follow them every jump and wait for one of their guys to not warp off as fast as the rest. So you can see on my scan here, there's a lot of ships on scan, well more than I could fight. And I decide I'm going to try to catch what I call a straggler, somebody who's lagging behind. I happen to catch an Atron. There's also a Drake and a Talos here. Don't care, like I was saying before about diving in, Drake and Talos... They're of no threat to me. The Talos warps because he was already planning to warp with his fleet anyway. So the only one left here to respond and try to save this Atron is the Drake. Drake gets me pointed and webbed. Important, I'm not scrammed and webbed. So I try my micro warp drive first before going to the overloaded afterburner, which is important. If you have the time and you can, always try the micro warp drive first. It's going to help you more than the afterburner. Hit the micro warp drive, and even though I'm webbed, even though he's putting missiles into me, even if he had drones on me, he is no threat to me. Um, I can easily escape him and get away, which I do. So, that's another opportunity and something for you to look for. Look for the people who are lagging behind. Alright, up next, let's do this one here against an Ares. So you can see here again a big fleet. Um, same area, Syndicate, Null Sec. Way more than I could ever hope to fight. Roughly 20 pilots and in this one I get a little bit too ballsy. So they've got one ship that's separated, a heretic. And I could probably take a heretic but I don't think I could take him before they could warp in and kill me. I would need a really awesome isolation. So, I split their fleet. I basically warp to the gate at 100, which puts the heretic 100 on one side, and the rest of the fleet roughly, well, you can see anywhere from 60 to 114 on the other side. The good thing is it puts me very close to this Ares, which was my goal. So I start moving. I move sideways, perpendicular to them and allow the Ares to charge me, then I turn back into him. You see the overshoot, we both miss point for a second. Scram web is on and I engage the Ares. So now I've got to make sure I'm orbiting. It's very important. And I've also got to try to keep track of where the rest of these guys are at. Because you can see that's a ton of ships on the field. A ton of potential incoming DPS. Even if the DPS isn't hitting very well, you know, missiles that aren't doing a lot of damage. Lots of small damage can really knock you out fast. So I'm dropping this guy as fast as possible, overloading guns and missiles and rockets. But then I go past my peak and shield, plus I see so many other things coming in close. You've got the Harbinger and the Cyclone and the Saber charging in, and you, you've got them all kind of getting close to that point 
where uh, a, a long point is possible and even worse a web if you start getting multiple webs on you then you're in real trouble so I see that it's a it's, this is where you gotta think really fast and I see that this is going very badly they're getting in a lot faster than I had hoped the isolation wasn't as good as I wanted and I probably took a fight that I shouldn't have so I'm, I'm wanting to kill this Ares I know he's about to go down but rather than getting greedy and staying on him I set my align and I burn straight away which takes me through the heretic I get scrammed for a second then get off the overloaded afterburner I think and then overloaded micro warp drive and you can see I'm in structure but because I was moving so fast away from the majority of the fleet straight through the heretic I managed to escape and survive a pretty nasty blob I unfortunately didn't kill the Ares which sucks but I, I made a pretty awesome escape so I, I was happy with it and I enjoyed the fight but in, in reality that was a risk I shouldn't have taken nonetheless it's a good way to uh, show you an escape so let's try uh, let's try one where I die so in this one I had spent a lot of time stalking this fleet and they were basically in two stabber fleet issues in an omen pretty much all anti frig and I really wanted to isolate one of their frigates so I tried everything I could do right there I, I decided it wasn't quite good enough so I tried to get out he just or not, maybe he pulled off there's one time I went down into the bubble and tried to fight the fire tail but then everything started landing on me so I had to burn out and escape so I just kept trying over and over and here's where I should have known that sometimes you've got to accept that you just can't get a kill and it's a bad fight so just back off but I was stubborn I'm usually stubborn about these things and I, I don't give up so I was watching and waiting for an opportunity to kill one of these interceptors the fire tail or the stiletto and there might have been a second stiletto I'm not sure <clears throat> that's what you see right now is I'm trying to find a way to make this fight happen but with they're pretty much anti-frig so I should just turn away move on find another fleet to fight but I don't so now I'm what I'm trying to do is to get the stiletto to tackle me but to get him to do it so that the rest of his fleet is less than 150k away so you saw he kind of charged me right there and I ran off the reason was that the rest of his fleet was more than 150 and that's what they're doing they're being pretty smart about this they're trying to always keep people at more than 150 kilometers so that after the fight starts they'll be able to warp in and kill me and land right on top of me stiletto's gonna have me scrammed so now I'm getting pretty close to that optimal where everything's less than 150 except for the omen which I can't position myself to position him out of the fight he's too far away so I say this is probably as good as it's gonna get and I kinda just sit still trying to maintain as, as optimal a position as possible for isolation he comes in he commits I get the drones out I'm much faster about getting my drones out now I just drag them I don't have a scram there you go get the scram on you see we're too far away he came in too fast if you saw him coming in he was coming in at 6k a second overloaded so he overshot out of both of our point range for a second which actually hurts me because that means that I, I missed several important or quite a few important shots in doing DPS to him now he's going down boom he's dead and here comes a critical choice and here's pop quiz you've just killed a stiletto off a fleet another stiletto has you long pointed what do you do if I had to answer that right now and I could pause this fight in process in progress and ask myself what do I do well for one I should be checking directional more <clears throat> and for two I should take notice that the omen is 16 kilometers away also and the stabber fleet issue is in warp to me so I'm about to have a stabber fleet issue and an omen on top of me 
while right now I'm only long pointed and I can overload a cycle of that micro warp drive to potentially the optimal thing to do is to run away from where they warp in their stiletto will get desperate and a little bit mad because I killed one of their stilettos already and he will chase wait until I'm roughly 100k away from the omen and stabber fleet then turn in on the stiletto and kill the second, second stiletto that's how I should have played it but I didn't so I say okay just complete tunnel vision second stilettos here still assuming that the other ships aren't on top of me I go straight for the second stiletto thinking I'm going to kill him and somehow get away miss the point again it's the second time I missed the scram. But now he's gone. They've got scram web. Or point web. So I try again to, to, to escape. I, I get really sloppy with running my propulsion there. And I die. So that was, that was an avoidable loss. I could have gotten away had I played that better. Had I played it better, I probably would have gotten two stiletto kills and got away. Which illustrates the, the importance of ha having the ability to record your fights. And I recommend not fraps like I was using here. I recommend open, open source broadcasting software, OBS. Just check my website and you'll see um, a video about how to set it up and, and do everything. It's free. You can record your fights. And by recording your fights and going back and watching them later, make a huge difference in your PvP. There's so many mistakes that you make and you have no idea you make until you go back and watch your fight. So, let's do this one here. It's the fleet. So in this one, I'm with the fleet. I believe the, the rest, rest of our fleet are frigates. And the rest of our fleet is uh, chasing an Atron fleet. Now, the people we're chasing, 404, I think it was, at the time had this PvP strategy of fighting against us. We had beat them really bad for a long time. We moved into an area near them and did tons of damage to them. Killed them every night. Um, kept wiping their fleets to where they wouldn't even fight us. They wouldn't undock. Um, then we uh, bubbled their Titan Paws for a while. And um, when that got boring, we killed their Titan Paws so their Titan couldn't log in and left uh, heavy interdictors on it at all times, you know, so people could log in if we ever saw a Titan pilot log in. So for probably three or four months, they lost their use of a Titan. Um, so they were, they were mad at us, and, and the, their strategy for getting back at us was to fly super cheap. So what they did here is they saw we had a frigate fleet, so they got a bunch of T1 fit Atrons, like I think it's six or so T1 Atrons, and their whole fleet together was worth maybe five, six, seven, eight million isk. So if they lost their entire fleet but killed one of our ships, they won the fight on efficiency. If they killed my Dramule worth 70, 80 million isk, they really won the fight. So here we are on a gate. We know they're coming and they jump into us. Sorry, coughing. They jump into us, and let's see what they do. Automatically, as they uncloak, see some are going back to gate. One of them's engaged me. Me. Now they're starting to make the decision. And they decide. Primary Abaddon. And so they all go on me. So right now I'm soaking up the DPS from all the Atrons, which... Even with Tech 1 guns, if you have good skills, can still do pretty good DPS. And I noticed that right about there. I noticed that I'm being primaried and I'm going down pretty fast. So, overloaded afterburner. I know I'm scrammed. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to move as far away from these guys to lessen their DPS. They're using blasters, so the further I get away from them, the less DPS they'll do. While applying as much DPS as I can to them with my drones and missiles and a little bit of fall off from the guns so that I can kill them as I'm moving away and avoiding DPS while the rest of my fleet just basically cleans them out. And we completely wipe them out. They don't get a kill. 
so they lose. Last guy here will wait to, to watch him die. And he even thinks, oh, he's come back. I can kill the Dramule. No, you can't. Fight's over. So you can see Anlan took some damage too there, I think, or unless he already had it. I'm not sure. All right. So I want to do that video, but not just yet. Let's look at the, t the, the Talos video real quick. So this is what I meant about roaming Nolsec and looking for Care Bears to kill. So I scanned down Talos to a belt. This is back when people still ratted in belts. <laughs> you can still find people in belts sometimes, but it's, it's rare. So we're in Fountain. He's in a belt. He's in a Talos. Talos, the biggest threat to me are drones. So I can, if, if needed, kill the drones, but in most cases I'm going to go right on the Talos and hope that I can survive the drones. It all depends on the situation. This guy, however, I'm not sure if he even put out the drones. But an important note here is when you're coming in on something like a Talos, a Tornado, something like that, Oracle, the approach is the most dangerous part of the entire fight. So I land 24k away from him. While I'm going towards him, he can either warp away or he can get a very good shot on me with low transversal. I have to do make the most out of the lock time. It's going to take him six, seven, eight seconds to lock me. In that amount of time, I need to be in right on top of him with some good transversal. So I land. I'm experimenting with micro warp drive in the F3 slot. Hit the uh, micro warp drive. Shoot in on an approach. Launch the drones while I'm approaching. Then drop the micro warp drive after one cycle because I don't want the extra sig. I overshoot. So I need to go to afterburner to get back in close. I've got the orbit at 500. Technically, he should have been able to lock me by now. And he should have gotten one, at least one, really good shot into me, taking me into low shields. But he was real slow about it, maybe even AFK. <clears throat> A lot of these guys back in deep null sec get so bored, so confident, and so lazy with their safety that they'll just go into a belt or an anomaly with the famous AFK Ishtars and just sit there and go AFK while their drones do all the work or something like that. Or just sit there and push F1 every once in a while to kill the rats. So I get in close and once I'm in close, like I was saying in the EFT part of the video, you turn your afterburner off because you want to stay as close as possible to do maximum DPS. Even with my afterburner off, you see I'm at 1100 with no afterburner. And it might be due to the fact that I was kind of wanting to fight the stiletto. <coughs> no, it's not. So right here, the stilettos come in. And I'm not worried about a stiletto killing me. Since there's nothing but a stiletto and Talos on scan, I know that Talos is about to die. <coughs> I've been overheating quite a bit, so he's going down. Talos is not much of a threat right now. He's going to die. Stiletto's not a threat. This is basically going to be a free stiletto kill for me is what I'm thinking at this point. So, right here I should be approaching the stiletto before the Talos dies. I'm not. I should get that point off right now before the stiletto gets out of range. I didn't. Should have got the micro warp drive on much sooner. I didn't. And I allow him to get out away from me. Now, even though I'm faster than him, I'm not much faster than him, and he's able to warp away before I can get a point on him. Just barely. So it's possible, had I executed really well there, that I would have killed the stiletto as well. And that's something else to look, for, look, to, look forward to. You, know, you look forward to it, um, and so it's what you're after, is you want to escalate the fights, and you want people to kind of have like a domino effect where you kill one guy and they bring another guy and you kill that guy and they bring another guy and you keep it going as long as you can. All right, and then... I'm not even sure what this video is. Let's find out. It's supposed to be Tristan, not Trithian. Ah, okay. So, this video is a faction warfare. Villa Rare. One of those fun systems to say. I've got suspect, just barely. And I see a bunch of frigates on a small site. I warp to zero, which is not advisable. 
because if they were all on the outside of the site, I'd be in big trouble. I shortened my distance down to 1.4 AU, which is it used to, you have to subtract a number, but you don't have to do that anymore. You just move the slider. Or no, I, I warped to 100. Awesome. Okay, so I did it right. You warp to 100 if you think there might be more than one ship there. Just to be safe so you don't land right into a big fleet and just get completely ganked. I see it's just one, so I charge. If he just sits there while the rest of his buddies are inside the plex, I know they're inside the plex because I've lowered my range to 1 AU and can see that they're all still on scan. If they're not here, that means they're in the plex. Charge him, try to get point. Had I locked a little sooner, maybe I'd have got him. Maybe, I don't know. But he warps off. So fast forward. I sit here on the plex. I, I just want to fight, being a greedy, thinking, okay, I'm going to get this fight. So I keep waiting. They're staying in the plex, staying in the plex. And then we see a Tristan come back. Now, if the very same Tristan that ran away from you before comes back later to where he knows you were and knows you are, there's a good chance it's bait. So he's already telegraphing to me that he's probably bait. And the rest of his buddies have probably left or some of them have left the site and are working on coming back. So I go into this knowing there's a good chance of bait, but I think it's Tristan. I'm a Dramiel. I can probably kill this guy pretty quick. Get on to him. Try not to overshoot. I did pretty good about that. He gets me scram webbed. He goes down pretty fast. Looking good. Then, unfortunately, the video ends. Let's start the next one. Is this it? No, that's not it. Still getting used to using this new recorder. It's, I haven't found an easy way to, to do it all exactly perfectly. All right, so here we go again. So he's going down. Everything's going good, but now there's a purifier that's uncloaked. Now, purifier with my small sig, sot, sig radius and the mana core now. Stealth bombers are a joke. They're not going to do any DPS, DPS to me whatsoever. The only thing they're doing to me that's having any effect is the target painter. And the target painter is going to make me take just a little bit more damage, which you can see I'm not taking any damage. So I don't know what's going on with this Tristan. He just forgot to shoot at me. Um, same thing with the Manticore and Purifier. They're just like wanting to, I guess, uh, get themselves on the kill mail because everybody's on comms. Oh, let's go gank a bad in 21 in this Dramiel. So I'm staying on this guy. I want to kill him, but I see that the Ishkar comes in. And I think to myself, okay, it's looking a little bit bad. I probably could take everything on this field except for the Ishkur. You know, if the Ishkur wasn't here, I'd take all three ships easy. With the Ishkur here, it might be a problem, but maybe I could do it. But certainly as I see more stuff starting to come in, which you'll see in just a second, I decide, no, there's just no way. I've already got something selected to align to. I killed the Tristan, so now I'm aligning. Afterburner overheated because I was scrammed, not anymore. I should turn it off right now. I didn't. So now I'm scrammed, or now I'm long pointed and webbed. Let's see, the Ishkur has me webbed. It's a long web rate distance. It must be not over with its cycle. And so now even more comes in. I lock up one of the Tristans that got too close. And typically, when I'm running away like this, what I'll do is anything that gets close enough to scram me, I lock up so I can counter scram. And I'll scram them, they'll fall off, and I can maybe get a micro warp drive cycle in. Very tempted to turn in on that mana core and try to kill him. But it's just there's way too much on the field now. If I turn back in, I'm going to die 100%. So at this point, what I'm thinking is there's another Tristan that came in close. Get DPS and scram on him. See if you can force him back or maybe get a lucky kill. Atron's starting to burn at me. He's overloading his micro-warp drive. Trying to catch up and get a scram for his fleet. But his fleet's turned around. So right here, two things are going through my mind. One, I could turn back in on the Atron and get a kill. I should have done that. Two, I could potentially warp across this field to a wreck or to a wreck at range and get an isolation there somehow. Doesn't look like that's a very good possibility in this case. 
So what I should do here is I should turn in on that Atron. I mean, you can see Atron's 26. He's just starting to turn around and go the opposite direction. So it might be too late. He might pull me into their fleet. But the Tristan 72, the Ishkur is 101. Everything else is further. So I, I have a pretty good isolation if I turn back in. But I didn't because I saw the Atron turn away from me. You can see now radial velocity. This velocity towards or away from is now 6,000. So he's moving away from me. And he would drag me right back into the rest of their fleet. I've got a lot of drones on me as well, which I don't want to have to tank in the middle of a fight. So I just decide not to engage any further and to take my one little Tech 1 kill and get away. Now I realize killing Tech 1 frigates in a Dremel not all that impressive, but sometimes it's what you get. Sometimes you get the Talos, sometimes you'll kill uh, something else, a, a faction frigate worth 200 million isk. You, you just never know. You take what you get. So for the last video here, I've done most of these. Um, some of them really aren't all that good. Lost to the comment. Basically, I get blobbed by a comment in a daredevil because I think I'm about to get a 1v1 with a comment and a daredevil lands on me. I wasn't very aware of my surroundings. Uh, bad situational awareness meant that I got double teamed. Daredevil webs mean you have no speed advantage anymore. And now you're just a shield tank frigate that can't move versus a daredevil that has much better DPS out output and a comet that has much better DPS output. So you lose any advantage you had. This one here is back in curse. And so what happened here is a fleet of frigates, assault frigs, tech one frigs, <coughs> were coming through the system and trying to get a fight. I tried to fight them. I wanted to fight them. But they would only fight me if they were all together. So finally they get bold and they put a Tristan on the station with a retribution 33k away. I know the retributions just slow as slow can be. Very slow. I know the wolf's on scan. He's not far away, probably at a nearby planet or moon. I decide I can probably kill this Tristan before anything else can get to me and get away. I already know pretty much it's bait, but I, I take the bait. Wolf comes in at zero. Okay. Wolf can shred you pretty fast. Um, you have to be careful. He has no web most of the time. He's just got a propulsion and a, and a scram. So your speed can give you an advantage on him. The wolf takes too much time to get DPS onto me. And you can see I start pulling away from the Tristan <clears throat> because the retribution is getting closer. DPS from the wolf and retribution at the same time can be dangerous. So I start pulling away. I kill the Tristan. And basically I let my drones finish the Tristan as I burned away. He didn't warp off, so it's an easy win for me. And the rest of the fight pretty much ends here. What I did do, though is I was wanting this fight to continue, so I let my drones, my drones were attacking the Retribution, and they weren't shooting the drones. So my plan at this point was to let my drones slowly wear down. No, they're on the wolf, okay. I was going to let my drones wear down the wolf and get him in low hit points, so just kind of kite around them for a few minutes, let the drones work on the wolf, and then I was going to shoot back in and engage the wolf while he was low hit points but he warps off and someone from my alliance undocks a legion which scares the wolf and the retribution and the fight ends there they, they won't fight me anymore after that nor, nor should they so that's the dremel guide i'm going to try to get a little bit more footage uh, with the fit i've been wanting to fly it but i'm pretty tight on time and stuff i'm trying to get done so i'm not sure how long it'll be before i get more dremel footage when i do i will post it below this video as a little update and uh, let you know via email when I post that.